Welcome to A Double, Double, and Dice, with your host Kim, and Jocelyn. Pour your favorite beverage, pull up a comfy chair, because we are ready to roll. Time. Space. Reality. It's more than a linear path. It's a prison of endless possibilities where a single choice can branch out into infinite realities. Creating alternate worlds from the ones you know. We are the watchers. We are your guides through these vast new realities. Follow us and ponder the question. What if? Dice Masters didn't have a competitive scene. Oh, I'm going down to the local game store tonight to play some Dice Masters. Are you? I am. Um, you know, it's uh, it's super fun. And have you have you ever played the game Dice Masters? I have. I've heard, I've have. So, um, where we play it, there is uh, like you keep score, but it doesn't matter because there's no competitive scene. Hmm. So you just play with people. <laughs> you just play with people and you have fun. a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really nice that there's no competitive scene because, you know, there's no potential arguments and people <laughs> don't argue over the cards and how they're interpreted or worded. Because mm-hmm. these things it's, are worded very good. It's super fun. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just, you know, it's a game we play. Sometimes I play it at the kitchen table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sit down with Rob and we get to play this game and it's so much fun. Yeah, and you get to play it online with yeah, other people and have some fun. Exactly. And, um, you know, some of these games have, like, such competitive, like, events, like Magic and and Flesh and Blood and whatever else there is. And <laughs> when you go out to play those games, you can win, like, money. And people are a cutthroat. Oh, well, when money is involved. Come on. They- they are always out there. They're just like, they're, they're, you know, elbowing each other and they're playing gotcha games like, ha ha ha. You didn't know that this is how the game worked. Um, yeah. It's just, I'm, I would not want to be involved in anything like that. No, that doesn't sound like fun. No. And I like just rolling my dice and seeing what happens. That's what I love about dice masters. Like, you know, I can play with all my favorite characters and some of the characters that I've never heard of before. And, uh, you know, and, and then I just roll the dice and we see what happens. I like to build these walls of characters so that my opponent can't get any damage through. But then you know what happens? They build a wall? Well, yeah. And then eventually I get frustrated. So then I just attack. <laughs> and then all that happens is that I clear out my field and then they win on the next turn but it really doesn't matter because there's no points or anything no because you're just having fun yeah and your your Um, teams can be very thematic they can be for sure i just wish there were more people that played this game because i don't i don't know of anyone else that plays it except for you know you Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we go down to the game store to play and it's just the two of us playing and uh you know i just you know i don't know how i don't know how you grow the game um I don't, I don't know what would happen. I don't know. I don't know. But Dice Masters is fun. You could be very creative with Dice Masters. I particularly like it when I can play a team that has somebody from WWE plus somebody from Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> plus DC Comics plus Marvel Comics plus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles plus Warhammer. I didn't even know what Warhammer was before I started playing Dice Masters. And don't forget Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I remember that one. I think that was like one of the originals. The art on those cards was kind of weird. They were a little freaky. Do you see some of the eyes on some of them? I don't know. I don't know. It's like yeah, it's looking at know. you. The screenshots. I think they were screenshots from the television show and they weren't very high resolution. Yeah. But Probably the game's gotten better. It has. Yep. It they has. came from comic books. Did you know that? They came from comic books. Well, the pictures they take. It from oh, the comic pictures. Book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wish there was different ones, though. I'd really like it if there were more Fantastic Four. Mm, yeah, I'm a big fan of the Fantastic Four. They're pretty cool. I mean, they did have some Invisible Woman come out. You How did that. you know? 
because she's invisible. Oh, how do I know <laughs> she's invisible? Because <laughs> she's invisible. How do yeah, you that's know? how I knew. she's <laughs> So all all puns aside, <laughs> what if Kim? What if there was no competitive scene for Dice Masters? What would Dice Masters look like if there was no if there was no competitive events? I, I mean, I think people would still play, and play with. And as we said, this is an this is a, this is a perfect online game too, right? Because it's really you just need a camera pointing down at your mat and then you have mm-hmm. your team uh the other person doesn't really need anything of yours really other than your basic actions but you know that can be just a die that represents them and it's so much so easy so i mean who needs a competitive scene when you have hundreds of people all over the world who just wants to play there are dozens dozens of us Um, yeah, I mean, before, like, when, when you first started playing this game, Kim, the game of Dice Masters, who did you play with? When I first started playing? Yeah. Myself. Right. And you got into it because what you watched Rodney. Rodney. Yeah. Rodney and his son, uh, played and I, I love dice rolling board games. Mm -hmm. So I guess Dice Masters is it's to me it's kind of like it's kind of like a board game it is a board game right so it's a tabletop game yeah so and then roddy does board games and i came across it and then i was like this is pretty cool because it's dice rolling and there's not much cards to it and then there's like abilities and stuff that you do with the dice and uh i started uh, i looking online and i found avx was my first one mm-hmm. the starter the starter kit set whatever they called it um, and then I just started uh, learning by playing by myself. So I had two right. different mats, two different teams, roll one, play, roll one, play kind of thing. Right. And how long was it, Kim, before you found somebody else to play with? I think your, once your I husband's kinda... not into it, right? No, no. He saw it and was like, nope. <laughs> he doesn't like dice rolling games. So he never actually played with me. And I'm like, I, I really enjoy this. And then I started looking at, because back then, they sold singles, right? Right. That you can buy online. And then they sold dice that you can buy as well. And then I started buying characters that I like. Like my favorite characters from DC, Marvel, things like that. Like Gambit. Uh, like Gambit. <laughs> um, and then once I kind of had a bit of a collection, I guess like enough cards Mm -hmm. um understood the game a little more um i believe i found a group either it was through facebook or through board game geek okay and then um i figured out what store they went to uh i spoke to the one guy and then that's how i pretty much started because there was a little group already uh playing about three or four of them Mm mm-hmm um, and then I joined them and I started playing with them locally in person. Okay. And then how long was it before you knew that there was actually competitive events playing this game? A long time. Like I didn't, I was just playing and coming to the local store every week and just playing. Like, honestly, I think when I got, maybe when I realized, honestly, I can't remember. Maybe when I realized it was an online portion. But I don't remember how I came to know that. About online play? Yeah. So for me... I honestly can't remember. We've talked about about this before as well, right? Like Rob heard about the game from uh, a podcast person that he listened to. Mm-hmm. So we picked up a starter kit and we taught ourselves how to play. We were at Fan Expo. We found a Justice League starter kit. And <laughs> we tried to teach ourselves how to play out of the book. And then we found some videos and the local store in Toronto, Meeple Mart, was where we yep, used to buy our yep. product. And back then you could get just the little dollar twenty-five packs, right? Two cards, two dice. Um, and anytime we went into Meeple Mart, we'd grab some of those and we would just add to our collections. And that was how we started getting into Dice Masters. And we just played with each other. We played at the kitchen table. We played these epically long games where... I built a wall of characters and then he <laughs> built a wall of characters yeah. and then I would eventually get frustrated and attack and then eventually he would win. Um, and we started to get a little bit better 
And then sometimes it was hard to find stuff, right? Like product, so, you mean? Yeah, it was hard to find product. Mm -hmm. Product was was not readily available at some points. Like, for example, um, the Thor draft packs, the ones that had the basic actions in mm -hmm, them, mm -hmm. because Thor came out as a gravity feed and it also came out as draft packs. Um, and we couldn't find Thor draft packs here in Canada. We ended up buying some off of like eBay or an American site or something and having them shipped in. Um, same thing with Tomb of Annihilation. We couldn't get any Tomb of Annihilation. We had to order that online. Uh, but right before all of that, so um, we, we were playing one day and... I think what happened was Rob had gone into one of the local comic book stores um, east of Toronto and he saw something about a WKO okay. and he looked it up yeah. and we had, we had just missed the WizKids open for Dice Masters. It had just happened like two or three weeks before. Mm. So we had just missed it. And I think that was like the last ever Dice Masters WKO. <laughs> So we just missed it. We're like, yeah. we had no idea, A, that anyone else played this game, or B, that there were, like, competitive events. Yeah. So whatever year that was, I think it was 2017. Um, once we found out that there was, like, competitive style events, we did some Googling, and we found that the uh, Canadian Nationals event was going to be held in Toronto. So we went to the Legion Hall and we met the Dice Masters players. It was being happening with the Hero Clicks as well. And we found the Dice Masters players and they were super excited to see us. And look, there's people that we don't know about that play Dice Masters. <laughs> and uh, basically they were all from Ottawa. <laughs> they had all come <laughs> down from Ottawa. It was the Ottawa and, and Gatineau group yeah. that had come down to play pretty well. I think there were some other people there. And... Uh, they wanted us to stay for like a draft and we're like, we have no idea what draft even is. We were like so scared. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, we ended up leaving, but having known that it was not long after that, Kim, that I think that I found you. Which was through Facebook? Through Facebook. Through yeah. the, we Cause we had found the Dice Masters Unlimited Facebook group and we were using it to ask rules questions when we couldn't mm -hmm. figure out how the cards worked. Mm -hmm. So we knew there were people that played the game. But it wasn't until um, we started playing and then we were connecting online with people. And I think, I think how I found out about Dice Masters being played online on Twitch was through Ben. Okay. Um, because Ben, obviously, Ben Syed Scott from the UK was living in Canada at the time and he had come out to play with us a couple times and he i think it was i think it was him that him plus facebook or whatever that helped me figure out that there was online and i think between you and i we found out about online at the same time okay because when you came in i think i was uh the original group that i was playing with kind of stopped playing the game and started getting into other things and i think by the time you came in i was probably running Dice Masters events at that. Yeah, at you that, were at local place. So, so they weren't yeah. around, but we still had like a crowd. Yeah, I met them like once. They came out for one thing, and then yeah. after that, I never saw them again. Yeah. Well, they they I saw them. They were there playing other games. Yeah. But um, but anyway, so so yeah, so at that point when I met you, I knew there was competitive Dice Masters, but I I was still kind of learning how to play the game, like. I understood the basics, but I didn't understand, you know, the underlying mechanics and the, uh, you know, what, what do they say on Roll and Thunder? The beauty of the underlying mechanics. Um, and like sort of some of the nuances of play, like global abilities and action dice and when mm -hmm. you would buy those over characters. And then starting to play with you and and the crew there, Marcus, Reg, Reg Ben. Yeah. Um, watching stuff online that sort of helped prepare me for a competitive scene. And then Rob and I went and then Rob came out and then we went to Canadian nationals. Right. So that was the first time we went to a competitive event and competed. And, uh, 
And it feels like ever, ever since I knew competitive dice masters existed, I wanted to be a part of it, right? I wanted to be a part of this community and I wanted to get more women involved and, you know, all those types of things. I had like this little fire under me, <laughs> but you know, do I need competitive dice masters to have a fire under me and trying to get more people to play this game? I don't think so. Mm -mm. I think there's so many people that, that just want to have play. no interest in competing yeah. and they just want to play. Right. Yeah. I was scared so, too. Like I never wanted to even do any, once I got learned online, I never wanted to even go near online tournaments <laughs> because again, I was afraid of yeah. like either getting beaten two minutes. You know what I mean? And I was just like, I don't know if as a new player, I want to be like, you know, getting into this and yeah, you're a little bit scared. Yeah. And I mean, for, I don't know about for you, but for myself as a woman, um, you know, there is that, am I going to be judged for being a woman playing mm. this competitive game? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, at least with online, like, I mean, I guess people can tell by your hands, especially mm. if I paint my nails and stuff. I mean, not that men don't paint their nails, but you know, my hands are feminine. So, but, uh, I was, I was thinking like, could I have hid that I was a woman, but I don't want to hide that I'm a woman. I think I'm, no. I'm proud that I'm a woman that plays games. Yeah. Right. And plays them well. So, but I mean, I played this game for years before I knew that competitive even existed and there's mm -hmm. so many different things that you can do with it. So if Dice Masters didn't have a competitive scene, you know, would people still play it? And I think the answer is yes. Yeah. I mean, take a look at it now. I mean, when was our really okay, when was our really big competitive event? Last not last year, year before, right? Uh well no, there was there was Worlds at Gen Con. Oh yeah, this which was last year. Yeah, twenty twenty three. Um there was fourteen people that played. Mm hmm But with that said, I mean it was a last minute announcement and Gen Con is very difficult to get to if you don't plan it out early enough. Um, and I think that had WizKids kept uh, Worlds at Memphis, like there were people from the UK that were planning to try and make their way over. Mm -hmm. So like in 2019, yeah, 2019 was the last Worlds event in Memphis. And it had like 34 or 36 players in the, in the world's event. Yep. But even though with that low, low, uh, attendance of 14, did you say or something? Um, yeah. we are still playing today. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we have content creators that, uh, keep the game going by having their tournaments and, um, sure they can be competitive, but not always because if you look at most of these tournaments they're very not like they're not meant to be competitive it's meant well, to see what kind of creativity you can do with it with a team or what what exactly parameters because, you have right so to like make a team. having having recently so as many of you know i have started to play hero clicks <laughs> which is whiz kids not just started game. to play I play it more now than I did before. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but where was I going with this? I had a point. Dice masters, hero clicks, competitive scenes. Oh, like the competitive scene of hero clicks is not all of hero clicks, right? The competitive scene is dice masters is not all of dice masters on a recent uh, podcast that I was listening to for hero clicks. I know heresy. I'm a witch. Um, uh, they talked about how the smaller a format is, the quicker it is to be quote unquote solved, right? So if you have not a lot of figures, for example, in Heroclix, or, mm -hmm. you know, if you're playing a, a limited magic game or something like that with limited sets that, you know, the cream of the cream would rise to the top. And, you know, if you wanted to play, you would play those cards and we see that in Dice Masters right now, if you look at Modern, because Modern is only four sets. 
And the cream of the cream is master mold because the damn thing's overpowered. Mm -hmm. Right? If you take master mold out of the equation, there are strong cards, strong abilities, but one of them does not necessarily trump the other. Right? There's multiple things that could win. Yeah. You know, and I think we've talked about this in the past that, you know, you take out that one card, yes, something else could rise to the top, but you also have to look at the support. If the support is the same for everything, like Dark Phoenix Global, then, you know, maybe that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you went, when we went to Memphis, you know, there were, not Memphis, when we went to Gen Con last year, Rob and I, out of the 14 players, I think six or eight of them were running Master Mold. I was running Master Mold. Rob was running Master Mold. Um, top four was three out of four Master Molds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the cream rises to the top. It is the best card in the current format if you're playing Modern. If you play Golden, which is everything under the sun, then there's a lot of different things. And Master mm -hmm. Mold is not necessarily the cream of the crop, but it is still very strong and still very consistent. So, you know, again, it might be a, a card worthy of banning. But when everybody's playing the same thing, how fun is that? Where's the creativity? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, one of the things I like about Heroclix is even though right now the, the meta is small for modern, and I'm not a competitive Heroclix player, I don't play competitive Heroclix generally, um, pretty well any of the strong stuff can win. There are a few figures that are perhaps problematic that they might need to look at, but generally there's more options. There's more things that you can do. And, you know, just like in Dice Masters, maybe not just like in Dice Masters, but the luck of the dice does make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have a format that is essentially for quote unquote solved, then it's less fun, right? And if you're focused on building teams to win, it's very easy to play the same cards over and over. The ones that are consistent, the ones that help you get to where you are. Like we talked about Dark Phoenix Global. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that a minute ago. You could consider that a crutch, right? It yeah. makes it very easy for you to get what you need. Right? Sidekick making globals make it very easy for you to get a sidekick Sinister. so that you can Dark yeah. Phoenix it. Sinister. Um, Sinister, exactly. You know, prior to Sinister, we had Clayface. Yeah. You know, these, these things are so useful that everybody starts playing them, especially when they're at global speed. And those are the things that I think impact the format more than anything else. Yeah. So you, you start playing with the pieces that you need all the time. Well, if I do this, it makes my team consistent. If I do this, I can definitely get my figure, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Villainous Pact, right? Mm-hmm. Villainous Pact makes almost anything un unblockable, basically, right? So some of these things, when they have been sort of mulled over and practiced by everybody then it becomes less fun. Yeah, because nobody wants to keep seeing the same thing over and over again of when they're playing. Exactly. And as long as as long as we have this like very small modern meta, we're going to keep seeing that unless they make some changes or some bans. So, you know, competitive gaming is not where we have the most fun. No. You and me, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe there's other people with different opinions. Yeah, and, so. and we would want to hear those opinions. And, like, I... Okay, once in a blue moon, I may feel competitive. Okay, like... Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner was pretty... It's pretty competitive. Uh, but that was, but like, limited, though. It. You tried but, it out. Yeah, and it was limited. I think it was only to um, affiliated. So it's not like I had, you know... So, a lot of support because I had to go yep. with affiliated with him, but he alone is just dominates, and especially if you roll well, which is this game is about rolling. It was a lock of me rolling. It, I got what I needed every single game. Yep. 
So it's pure luck. That was pure luck. But yes, I mean, I felt competitive. Guy, I didn't even think, well, with the affiliated team, it doesn't sound competitive. Right? It, but for a card like that, it doesn't need a lot of support. No, no. And then, yeah, I pretty much won that tournament. But you know, that was my first ever. And how many tournaments have I probably played in before that? Yeah. But you've done well. You've done yeah yeah but i i don't stuff. usually tend to go very competitive i mean orbital strike no. come on now like it's a, yeah i love hate relationship so and i mean when i play competitively i want to win mm -hmm. so i will build to win but i also mm -hmm. build to my own personal play style yeah right there's certain cards that i like to play but then when you play them over and over again then that repetitiveness you know becomes less fun yeah um, and you have to find different ways to do things. But then it's also, there's that part of you that's like, well, if I just picked this card, then everything would be so much easier. Yes, but you always play that card, right? And that's where themes come in. So there's so many different cards in this this game. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, go to the team builder, Kim, but is it is it working? Uh, it is temporarily under, yes, we do have a website for it. It is up and running under... Um, it's Rolling Thunder's got Rolling right? Thunder's website. Um, I'll link it in our show notes so you know what the link is for the team building. But it is up and running at the moment. If it's permanent, Thunder, that we don't know, I but it is up and yeah. running. Yeah. Yeah. So the team builder website, uh, which used to be hosted on the Dice Coalition, tb.dicecoalition.com, um, is currently not. Uh, there it is. It's. it's um, I got it. So it's it's not working. The the website host or whatever needed wanted too much money for for the people that run the dice coalition to continue to maintain it there so they've moved the team builder over to roll and thunder on xyz right now but there's nothing i just i just clicked on everything so like nothing's filtered out there are four thousand and seven four thousand seventy nine cards listed here now yes some of them are reprints mm -hmm. but that's a lot of combinations. Yeah, you can always find a golden nugget somewhere. <laughs> There's always something to do. And, you know, I have this this sort of thought process that I go through in my head sometimes. Like, you know, there's all these content creators and they've built the teams and they've done this and they've done that. But you know what? I haven't built that team. And my play style might be different than your play style and somebody else's play style. There's different ways to do these things, different ways to build teams. And the only way to do that is to, is to be creative with it. Mm -hmm. Play the, play the cards, do something different than you normally do. Maybe tell yourself, I'm not going to play Clayface. I'm not going to play Dark, Dark Phoenix. I'm not going to play Mr. Sinister Global, um, which we haven't talked about what any of those things do. <laughs> <laughs> Clayface was a global ability that you paid a mask. Yes. And you could take a die from your use pile and place it in your reserve pool on any energy phase. So it yes. helped you purchase stuff or use globals, etc. Mr. Sinister is too generic. You feel the sidekick from your use pile and you prep a sidekick from your use pile. Dark Phoenix is pay a bolt and KO target character die you control. The next die you purchase costs two less, minimum one, and it is um, stackable. So if you, if you KO a couple of things, then you can buy something for really cheap. Um, so those are some of the sort of key globals that that help make things um consistent uh another one that we talked about was master mold and uh if you're new to the podcast and new to master mold master mold is a super rare from dark phoenix saga and he uh when fielded when attacks and when ko'd you place a plus five plus five sentinel token in your in your field zone so um he's got pretty good stats he's a one five five two seven seven three eight eight i believe or two six six three eight eight um but those five five sentinel tokens are very difficult to ko and diff difficult to ma manage and especially when you pair it with the villainous pact action that says you buy the action when you play it it says, uh, you know, your opponent chooses one non-villain character die they control. All other non-villain character dice can't block this turn. So it's very easy to push damage through with that mm -hmm. four cost basic action die. So, you know, there's there's all these things. But there's also all these things that we don't 
do. And, and that's one of the things that you and I like to do, Kim, is we like to, you know, pick something random and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Right. We do our, you know, um, uh, our female characters in Dice Master series and we look at a character and we look at all the different cards and sometimes we find things that we never considered before. Yeah. Maybe we can like, build ooh, with that. Yeah. Interesting. And so, you never know. It could actually work out well, right? You just yeah. Give it a try. You have to give it a try. That's the thing, right? Yeah. You got to give it a chance. Now, with all of that said, for some people, the competitive piece is what makes them happy. Mm -hmm. They like to compete. They like to win, even though there's no money involved. This is not Magic the Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> this is not flesh and blood or whatever else is out there that pays money for people to win. One piece, probably. Um, you know, you might get some alt art cards. You might get some discontinued product. <laughs> <laughs> you might get a Yu-Gi-Oh! factory set. Um, but you're not, I think that's the joy of this game is that because you're not competing for money, the community itself, whether you're competing or not competing, is generally pretty friendly. Yeah. So there, there is that to be said about it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we don't get into like, um, what's the word? Um, I'm trying to think of a word, but I, I, it's not coming to me. But we don't yeah. get um, like in people's faces. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, we, yeah, we're not like, no, that's not how it does it. Because and I think, um, honestly, the, the rules and the rules that we get and the rule form and all that stuff actually is pretty good that it doesn't allow us to get like that you know what i mean like it mm -hmm. it's it's so straightforward that um we don't have to like we don't beat each other up over us like you know what i mean like anything yeah there was a time where i didn't even know there was a rules for him <laughs> yeah i didn't i did i think i learned that quite late and and do you know how much i loved playing this game even without a rules for him yeah you know like it was just it was like oh yeah this is fun and then when we learned how something worked we're like okay this makes sense now because mm -hmm. it's basically a different language right yeah You're learning the language of dice masters yeah like you read it you love. interpret it and that's what you go with right and mm -hmm. then you find out oh and, until someone says something differently yeah exactly. right so where did you find that out <laughs> so if dice masters didn't have a competitive scene which you know in 2024 we don't know there's been no news um maybe there won't be a competitive scene will the discord still be active Speaking of Discord, mm -hmm. like not only did I have no idea what was happening on Twitch, <laughs> like none whatsoever when, when I started watching Dice Masters on Twitch, but Discord was like way over my head. It was just like wow, and now yeah. like I stream on Twitch and and I and I a Discordian. Discord. <laughs> I don't know what they call people Discord <laughs> Discordian. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. But, uh, but yeah, so if Dice Masters didn't have a competitive scene, how would your life be different, Kim? Um, honestly, it will be practically the same. <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah. I mean, um, I, well, you know me, and I don't, it's not a big thing for me, right? Like, playing competitively or not. Um, I just want to play. And I like themes and building things differently and seeing things differently than, um, I mean, I went to Can Nat, sure, I got a little competitive, I didn't I made top five, but it was something I enjoyed playing, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't like exactly going for the top card then to try and win. It's not always, a, to I me, it's not about always winning. I think the biggest thing that would be different for me if Dice Masters had not had a competitive scene is that I wouldn't have some of the friends that I have today. So you're saying your friends are competitive? No, I'm saying that I met my friends through competitive Dice Masters. Dice Masters. Yeah. Right? If I never traveled to Memphis um, to play in in Worlds, I wouldn't have met you know, Ross or Nick or Matt, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's all kinds of people that I wouldn't have met. I'm not naming everybody because I can't think of everybody's name right now. But there's there's dozens of people that I would not have met um, or not met in person. I might have met them online. Maybe I would have played online. Maybe I wouldn't have played online if I wasn't playing competitively. Yeah. 
right? Maybe I would have just stayed playing at the kitchen table and maybe, you know, going out to the game store every once in a while with you, Kim. Um, you know, I'm, I might not have a podcast with you talking about this game that we love. Mm-hmm. This if? game that we love that I haven't played <laughs> in months. It has seemed a while, hasn't it? It's been a while since I played. Yeah. I think it feels a while for me too. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but it's always there, right? Mm -hmm. The product's there. I can pull it out. I can build a team and well, that's not true. I haven't played, I played not that long ago. Cause I, I went out and played with Matt Ryan, my hero clicks buddy, Matt Ryan. He came out one night, a few, it was probably in December, I think. And, uh, I've been teaching him to play Dice Masters from time to time. Rob and I have been teaching him and, and he came out and I, I had a couple of teams ready and we played some teams. So Is that I the one that with. I played with? Did you play with Matt or did you play with Dennis? No, who's the one that when you went away on vacation was the one I was uh, playing? I don't remember his name. Oh, that was Alex. Oh, Alex. Okay, so a different person. Yeah, Wiz Dad. Yes. No, you you know Matt. You yes, play DCC yeah. with Matt. Yep, <laughs> yep, that so, Matt, <laughs> that Matt. Um, so yeah, so you know that would be the think the biggest difference for me is that if there was no competitive scene, then I would probably not have met a bunch of these mm -hmm. people that are now my friends. And then I see I'm the opposite because I never go out to most of these uh, events, and most of the people I met was online. <laughs> Yeah. So it's a little, a little opposite, right? But like, would you have played online if you, I mean, you probably would have. Uh, probably because I think that's where I would have obviously met more people playing the game, right? And yeah. I feel like I started playing online because I was practicing for competitive events. So if I wasn't practicing for competitive events, I don't know if I would have mm -hmm. played online. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I find online so, is so convenient. <laughs> like, like look during COVID, yeah. right? How convenient was it? And we have a game that can actually so well be played online, and you get to play with a whole, people, yeah. a whole bunch of people all over the world. So, but you still have to own your stuff, right? You still have to yes, have access. To yes, product. you still have to have product. Yeah, it so, makes life a little easy. <laughs> so, um, anything else on what if Dice Masters didn't have a competitive scene, Kim? Um, no. Okay. Well, we want to know what you think. What would be different for you about Dice Masters if there was no competitive scene, if anything? So um, hopefully you can reach out to us and let us know. We'll, we will give you all of the different places that you can reach out to us at the end of the episode. Yeah. Cool. And... In the meantime, Kim, do we want to do dice bag or coming events? Um, I can do coming events. There's not many. <laughs> okay. um, so by the time this podcast comes out, this would have ended. Um, but Breath Weapon X7 um, is happening this weekend and we're recording before the weekend. Um, so that is uh, happening. So I guess next podcast, I can uh, let you know how that goes because I will be playing in it. Nice. Um, and it's remembering that I need to submit my team. <laughs> um, you and you know what? I was, I was laughing because I think my team might be a little competitive. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we'll okay. See. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we shall see. But it's a card I have not played in a very, 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 very long time. And it's one of my favorites. So um, we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that's... Um, would have happened um and a weekly dice arena still happens every other tuesday it's the second and fourth tuesdays in the month um just because obviously we moved it because of attendance and uh, maybe that doesn't feel like i haven't played in a while because attendance still has been low um but uh we keep trying right and absolutely uh, um and yeah look out maybe there could be some other stuff coming down the pipe from us stay tuned possibly news from dm-north.com yeah possibly maybe a event of some sort Pro probably <laughs> maybe all right my lips stay are tuned. tuned yeah 
And uh, yeah, so and uh, so uh, as I mentioned a minute ago before we did coming events, we want to hear your thoughts on what if Dice Masters didn't have a competitive scene or what if Dice Masters didn't have a competitive scene moving forward and what would be different for you. Um, our last episode was our uh, wrap on 2023. Three. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting the hang of the numbers now, Cam. Have you made a mistake um, yet and put 2023 yet? Not anywhere that can't be corrected. Okay. <laughs> so we had some feedback on the last episode, Kim, because Kim put on the uh, title of the episode, that's <laughs> a wrap. And we got some very panicked messages <laughs> from people that thought we were wrapping up the podcast forever. <laughs> But we were just putting, we were just wrapping up 2023. So we had a little bit of a chat about what 2023 looked like for Dice Masters. And we talked a little bit about what our plans were for 2024, both personally and from a Dice Masters perspective. Um, And aside from people being worried that we were going to hang up our, our podcasting hats and not podcast anymore, um, which I heard from Rob, as well as from uh, Andy, Andy May Mm -hmm. sent us an email. Um, and, uh, I think there was somebody else too that had sent a message saying, that's a wrap. What's going on? Rob was like, did you guys decide to stop podcasting and not tell me? And he didn't know. (laughs) Surprise. I said, I "I didn't know what Kim was going to call the episode. You Um, never know. No, no, I never, you probably don't know until it's uh, uploaded. Right. So that's right. And, and, uh, you know, as, as I've mentioned, Kim is, is the, the hard work behind this podcast. I just show up and talk. So anyway, so we got that feedback from a bunch of people who are very happy that we are still continuing to put a podcast out and we're going to keep doing it as long as it's fun. Right, Kim? Uh, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But the rest of the the feedback we got had to do with my own personal um, goals. I'm not calling them resolutions. So uh, I had talked about getting a standing desk so that I could stand when I was working. And I had talked about doing this yoga 30 day challenge that I was really struggling with. And uh, that's where we got all of our podcast feedback. (laughs) Aside from, Oh my gosh, I'm glad you're not stopping podcasting. Uh, The rest of it was about my standing desk, which also for those of you that do not follow us on discord, um, the standing desk is not the only part of that solution. I also have a walking pad. I just didn't talk about the walking pad when we recorded because it hadn't arrived yet. And I wanted to make sure it worked first. So uh, on days that I work from home, I'm getting somewhere between 60 minutes and two hours of walking on the walking pad when I'm doing uh, meetings and such. So that's been pretty good. Um, and then I have caught up, Kim, on my yoga class. <laughs> so Sometimes there are multiple days a day I'm, to make it up. <laughs> yeah. There there are days that I have missed it and, and have had to sort of catch up, but they are short classes. They're They're only 18 to 25 minutes long for yoga with Adrienne and I have not gotten any spam and you do not actually have to subscribe to her emails in order to get the classes. They're just freely available on her YouTube. Um, and, uh, I'm really enjoying it. So, uh, just depending on what's happening in my life and the day to day, sometimes I can't get them done every single day, but I have caught up and, and I am caught up as of today. So today, as of the day of the recording, I did, I did two yesterday and then one today. So, all up all up to speed what about you kim have you been doing your walking uh no it's been too cold for me to walk this week (laughs) that's fair it's been very cold yes so uh so yeah and also uh jordo added me and i told him not to so jordo added you to what he sent the at symbol in discord oh i was like don't at me when i said about happy new year remember (laughs) so he sent me an at symbol gif um, and then there was quite a lot of conversation about um, the walking pad slash treadmill. And then some folks on YouTube shared their yoga stories. And I did want to call this one out from uh, Danny. She said, good luck with the yoga, but only do it if you enjoy it. Sometimes she does things that she feels obligated to do and they aren't really for her in the end. But mm-hmm. she feels her time is precious these days to waste on things she doesn't truly enjoy doing, which is good advice. Mm-hmm. Um, I do really enjoy yoga. I was just struggling to sort of get motivated. So once I get to my mat, I'm always glad that I've gotten there. 
So I am, like I had, I mentioned to her, I'm caught up and, and pretty happy about that. So, but hopefully next episode, we will have more feedback about what you think about if Dice Masters didn't have a competitive scene, A, originally, what would be different? And B, what if it doesn't have one moving forward? And in order to do that, you can reach out to us in a bunch of different places, like the people that we just talked about. The first thing you can do is you can send us an email at triple D podcast at DM North.com. Just like Andy may did when he was worried that we were closing up shop. <laughs> you can also, you can communicate with us on our YouTube at youtube.com forward slash DM North TV, where we post our episodes every Monday afternoon, every other Monday afternoon. Cause we post this episodes bi-weekly. Um, and you can also join our discord, which is where most of our conversation happens and Kim will link that in our show notes. And there's a Double Double and Dice podcast channel where we have all of our podcast conversation in there. Uh, you can also at us on Discord. You can at Kim at Super K or at me at Joss Stitch, J-O-C-E Stitch. Uh, if you want to send a private message instead of chatting publicly in the Discord channel, that's something that's available to you. You can find us on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever they call it, TikTok, threads, at DM North TV. And you can also find Kim uh, every Saturday on Twitch with our friend Matt and a various assortment of other people playing board games at twitch.tv slash dmnorthtv, which is also where Weekly Dice Arena is hosted the second and fourth Tuesdays of every month. And you can also comment on our website at dm-north.com. So until next time on a Double Double and Dice.